Kia ora team, Coach Brad here all the way from the beautiful land of the long white cloud, Aotearoa, New Zealand. Now, I'm approaching 50, but in my fifth decade, I've managed to run some of the best times of my life, including a PR in the half marathon of one hour 16. Now this beats a time that I set almost 20 years previously. So how have I done this? Well, I have put in habits in my daily life and my training that help maintain my stride length. One of the best ways to enhance your running performance, improve your efficiency, and decrease injury rates is to optimize your stride length. Now as we age, it's been shown that our stride length decreases and this negatively affects our running performance. So stick with me team, I'm gonna share with you my top four strategies to help maintain your stride length as you age. So you don't have to follow society and devolve into a shuffle as you run when you get older. The most life-changing and the simplest strategy to improve your stride length is strategy number four. So please stick around to the end of the video to really maximize your learning. So strategy number one, yoga now in my 20s and 30s i laughed at yogis i mean how could stretching and uh, funny looking pants make you healthier and run faster but now it's one session that i absolutely look forward to and love i started doing a class a week in my 40s and now i look to do between 10 and 15 minutes every day especially after a run or a cycle session and i find it really helps my hips really helps my hips, my lumbar spine. I'm not getting the aches and the discomfort that I used to even in my 20s and 30s after a training session. My favorite yoga go-to pose is to really help with hip um, length and to really improve my stride length is the warrior one and warrior two combo. So I'll go over that quickly with you now. Hey team, I wanna go over a couple of my favorite yoga poses. Now my first little bit of advice is find a class that fits with your schedule and go to it and then be prepared to be uncomfortable in my first year i was falling out of poses left right and center but sometimes you've just got to go in to a room where you're not the best in the room and struggle a little bit and i promise you it'll pay off so let's go over first of all warrior two so warrior two make sure your feet are aligned the heel on the front foot is in line with the arch and the back foot then make sure your upper body is straight and stacked on top of the pelvis, arms nice and wide, and then just sink into that stretch so that front knee is over the top of that front ankle, back leg stays nice and strong. That is your warrior two. Now to transition from warrior two into warrior one, you want your feet to be on a train track rather than on a straight line. So what you want to do is move that back foot into around a 45 degree angle and then that front foot goes parallel so that you're on train tracks rather than a straight line. And then you can move your pelvis towards the front and then you can raise those arms up. So again, back leg straight and strong, front knee over that front ankle pelvis forward and you're getting that lovely stretch which is going to help maintain that stride length improve that hip mobility plus you're working on a little bit of isometric strength at the same time so as I said before I like to put these warrior poses um, in a different routine after every cycle and every run session that I do rather than just that simple reductionist stretching. I find that yoga is such an effective full body stretch and balance and isometric strength workout. It's something that really maximizes your running performance and helps maintain that all important stride length. Strategy number two, dynamic warm up. So, Waking your hips up before a run is super important. So after a five minute slow jog, you want to really look at mobilizing those hips dynamically with some forward and back swings, some side to side swings. This really helps the surrounding musculature, the hip capsule, the, the tendons and ligaments really get used to those multi-directional forces which is going to help minimize injury and improve performance in your run session. Completing a hip mobility warm up before a run 
will stop the joints and the muscles from freaking out and guarding up. If you do this, it's going to help maintain that stride length as you age. Strategy number three, fire those glutes. Enhanced hip muscle activation is going to improve your running and decrease your injury and maintain better stride length. The biggest muscle to act on the hips, the glutes. Now if you can get the glutes firing effectively before a run, it's going to prevent overuse injuries for all the muscles below the hip. The muscles that are really prone to overuse injuries, the quads, hamstrings, calves, will be helped if those glutes are firing and acting correctly. Getting the glutes working correctly will prevent you from slipping into poor movement patterns and it's going to prevent you having time off with injury. Some of the framework glute work that I do around my run training make sure that I keep my glute firing in line with some fantastic core stability. So some of the exercises I really enjoy doing, uh, starting off with a bridge, a really simple way just to engage those glutes in a pretty simple position and then moving through to something like a single leg deadlift with or without weight. Starting without then adding a little bit of weight maybe with a kettlebell to really enhance that hip hinge and that glute firing as you go through range. Keep your glutes firing actively in your framework sessions around your running so then you can get that flow over effect and the glutes firing when you are running. The last strategy is the easiest to implement in your life and will give you the biggest gains in your stride length. Strategy number four, change the way you work and live. If you sit for more than three hours a day, then any stretching and glute activation work you do is only slowing your spiral downwards. The tissue creep will overwhelm your good habits. Your stride length will shorten, your hips will tighten, your glutes will atrophy as you sit on them, preventing important blood flow. In a seated position, your hip flexors will tighten quickly, creating hip and lumbar spine pain and dysfunction as you age. So please, get a standing desk. Cycle to work if possible. Take that meeting outside rather than sit down, take a walking meeting. We are not designed to sit. Sitting is killing your functionality, aging you prematurely, making you weak and destroying your running performance. Aging doesn't have to be linked with a decrease in stride length. If you can engage in habits and training practices that improve your muscle length, your hip mobility and strength of the biggest muscle group in your body, the glutes, you can maintain that stride length and therefore your running performance as you age. Put these four strategies in place in your training schedule and watch your running go to another level. Get into these exercises, get strong, earn your miles, be kind, champion compassion, and I really look forward to catching up with you on the next video.